here with your back to the couch there. Just stand there while I raise the couch a little bit. Okay, to about there. So what I'm going to ask you to do is just take one leg, grasp the knee like so, and I'm going to support you, rest your, your bottom against the, the couch, and we're going to roll you back, okay? <laughs> That's good. Okay, make sure that he keeps his knee there because that keeps stability in the lumbar spine, okay? If he doesn't do that, he's going to put his back into real extension and possibly cause real problems. As soon as he's in this position, I can take control. So I take this foot and just place it on my shoulder like so. You can now release your knee, lie back and relax. And then we can have a look at what's going on with this leg. And we're going to look at two things. How extended his knee is. Looking very extended, okay. Just check that. Nice springiness there. That is indicating that his rec fem on this side is very tight not the rest of the quads, purely rectus femoris, okay? So we know we've got something to address a little bit later on. The other thing we're going to look at is the angle of his femur in relation to the level of the couch. So if that is a neutral position, he's just a little bit below that, agreed? Yeah. So that's indicating to me that his major hip flexors, iliopsoas, are just on the flexible side, okay? <coughs> but his rep fem is tight. If he raises to about that position, he's in the neutral zone. If it's <coughs> above that, then that's indicating iliopsoas is tight. I'm going to go ahead and do a PNF technique anyway and just see if we can get a little bit more mobility out of this. The reason for resting their glutes right on the edge of the couch is to make sure that they don't roll back and go too far on the couch because if that happened, <coughs> as the leg drops down into that position, it'll be obstructed by the couch, and then you'll get a false reading of what their flexibility is, okay? So from this position, I'm just gonna put my hand over his knee, okay? And just make sure that that knee has, by gravity alone, gone, gone as far as it can towards the floor. I've clearly been talking way more than 12 seconds now, so we've had his 12 seconds of passive stretching to start with. We now begin the contraction phase. So what I want you to do is just push your thigh up into my hand with a very low contraction to start and then we're going to build it up, okay? So starting with a three, just start pushing. Four, five, six, seven, and hold at that intensity. And then you can immediately start counting down. Six, five, four, three, two, one, relax, deep breath in, and as he breathes out, you can see his leg drop anyway, just ease that towards the floor, and you can see we've already got probably 10 or 15 degrees increase there. From that position, we'll again hold for 12 seconds, so that he gets the passive stretch, and we're now up to a total of 36 seconds, so we're well into that creep deformation area, and we've had our inhib inhibitory response as well. We'll assume that's about 12 seconds again, so repeat the process, just start building up again, three, four, five, six, seven, and hold there, and then you count down in your own mind. One, and relax, deep breath in, let's see, breathe out, again, just ease towards the floor. And you'll do that for three cycles and finish with a passive stretch that you get the benefit of that last inhibitory response. Key things about switching limbs and finishing this process. Okay, we've kept a stable back. Yeah, there's no risk of injury so far. If I swap limbs to do this side and simply let this leg come down, again, it's going to put enormous strain on his back. His pelvis will anteriorly tilt. You get an increased lordosis there. And then when I pick the other leg up, I'll probably get a different reading as well. So I've got to keep that stable position. To do that, can we just bring this knee up? Okay, let that one down. And then I simply put that on that shoulder and carry on. Okay? And similarly, uh, when we've finished, 
If you can just take grasp of that knee, please. And then we step round to the side. And we're going to roll you back up into a standing position. Support them, and away you go. Okay? So he's young and fit, <coughs> strong, probably little risk of injury, but nevertheless, you must take those precautions and do that. Just before we finish on this, there are two other observations that you can pick up when the leg is in that position. If it is abducted, any idea what might be tight? The leg is dragged out sideways. You come back to biceps for more, it's no Your IT band might be tight, okay, if it's abducted. So that gives you an indication of something else to stretch. If his foot is rotated externally, then what could it be? Most likely to be piriformis and possibly biceps femoris as well. Okay? So you'd then go on and release piriformis first as being your main goal um, and then come back to, or move on rather, to biceps femoris and check that out as well. Okay? Any questions? Okay. Do you want to pair up?